Hello and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. Here we are at the Zim site, zimjs.com. And in the last basics video, we took a look at containers. And I did say we'd probably move to look at components in this basics, but I realized we forgot something with containers. We forgot to show how a container can have dimensions or not have dimensions. And they're sort of two different modes. So we'll want to take a look at that today. Also, I think maybe we could look at a tile as well. Tile's very handy. We talked about it last time, but we didn't make a tile with code. And we want to look at how to click on things, apply events, and that's that goes well with a tile. So that we can drag things uh, on a tile and uh, or find out what is clicked on and make it make it visible, that kind of stuff. So I suspect we'll do that today, and we'll look at components next time. Um, if you want to see things that, uh, or see how things work, you can take a look in the docs. Docs is the sort of all-encompassing place if we want to read about things, such as a container. So if I type container here, cont, or even cont probably, and hit enter, it finds container. This search, by the way, searches only these parts, the, the list of things. And for instance, let's do circle, circle, like that. Now it's found circle and opened it up. If I do a go, it's found hit test circle. If I do another go, hit test circle rect, hit test circle, hit test circles plural, and then we're back to circle. So that's how the search works. You can also do a control F and a control F will find anything uh, that's open. So now it finds circles uh, everywhere, including in the parameters, but only on the open things. If you wanted to find full text search, then click on text here and go control F. And now it finds 759 circles. So there they are. And you can go, but uh, you can go to each circle. Obviously this would be really annoying if you want to go find out how to make a circle and you had to go through 759 circles before you finally arrive at, oh, here's the circle class. <laughs> That's why we don't do it that way. <laughs> so the, um, uh, but you can do full text search if you want it that way. All right, and we don't want these circles showing up. We just want to open up circle. Once you've opened up something, you get information on the parameters here. Well, you get a description of the circle, you get an example, and then you get specific information on the parameters. Uh, this These parameters support duo. Duo is the way that you can pass in a single, uh, or a bunch of parameters normally, or a single object with um, properties. That's a Zim Duo technique. We looked at that in the last, or a couple Zim Basics ago. So if you haven't seen earlier Zim Basics videos, you might want to check those out. Here is, uh, it supports V. That's these things called dynamic parameters that have these special formats. And that's wonderful, but we'll get to see those later. Um, it also supports oct. Oct is Zim 8. And in Zim 8, we introduce styles, much like CSS. So we can style the circle. All right, that's information about the parameters. Then there's information about the methods that the object can have. These are sort of the custom methods for a circle, but there's also the circle will get all of the Zim fourth. So Zim fourth was version four of Zim, and it added all these methods like drag, hit, test, animate, all the short chainables. And you can also get the create.js methods such as on, off, get, get bounds, update cache. So these methods come with create.js container. And since a circle extends a container, it gets those. Properties. Here are the custom properties for uh, circles, including things like radius. And then there's all the Zim container properties such as width and height, and if it's draggable, level depth, etc. And there's all the create the basic create.js properties for containers such as x, y, rotation, scale. So those are all the transformation properties, alpha. Uh, if you want to see these create.js things, you would go to the create.js easel docs. Here's an example. If we go to, uh, I've, I've got it right here. 
There's a link to it often from, from inside the docs as well. But here's CreateJS. This is what Zim is based on. Uh, we wrap tween sound and preload as well. You probably won't have to come here for those uh, because we have animate, which is a bit different than how tween works. Uh, and sound is really easy and preload is really easy. That's all taken care of in the frame. So probably you won't need any of those, but you might want the docs on easel. So I'm clicking that and there are the docs. And here they are on the left hand side. And here's, uh, there is no circle exactly here, but there's docs on a container. And there's all the properties and or methods and properties and the events that can be added to a container. So any of these can be used on a Zim container as well. When we draw images, graphics, this is a hand, handy place to know. This is the graphics class. So in CreateJS, we have to uh, well, that's an unusual way of doing it. Um, where's an example? We make a new shape. Yeah, they don't exactly have that. They start with a graphics class, which is a little bit awkward. Um, you would make a new shape, and then you would apply these graphics on the graphics property of that shape. And it becomes a little bit uh, twisty to do that. It's one, one extra thing that sits in between. Well, in Zim, we took all of these things to do, like moving to and line twos and begin fills and that kind of stuff. We, we took all that and we put it right on the shape. So you don't have to go dot graphics dot move to. You just go our shape dot move to. And so that makes it easier. So we brought all of these tiny things into the Zim shape directly. Uh, I can show you that if, if you want. Uh, anyway, this is the CreateJS docs where you can find out information. Fortunately, the information is not all that much to tell you the truth. It's just, hey, this is a color. And, you know, it's, you'll find that um, they're okay. They, they sort of tell you what the parameters are, and then that's about it. So, uh, Anyway, it's all it's also all a bit simpler here. This is this is the base stuff. This is, you know, basic stuff. Um, Zim is extending it and providing all sorts of probably more complex uh, things to, to use, I guess you could call it. All right. Anyway, if, if we were to go to shape like that, shape, there's a pizzazz shape and here is shape. Uh, by the way, it just goes in order. When you do a search, if I'm sitting here and I do a search, it's going to find the next shape. Uh, if I were at the top, it would have found this shape first. So if, if we go to the top here and look up shape, then it finds the shape. But if, if we're already past the shape, if we were down here or something like that, we're in tips, and we do a search for shape, it found custom shape. And then it found the pizzazz shape. And then we loop back around to shape. So here's the Zim shape. That's a link to the, that page we were just looking at of all the short forms. Here's an example of how to use the shape. Here are the parameters for the shape. And there are the fact that we moved all the methods, right? We moved all the, the uh, small shortcuts, what they stand for, into there. OK, you can also view right here. So there we are viewing. This actually views the code. There we are extending the, the CreateJS shape right there. Uh, although we do that uh, initially down at the bottom here. Zim extends, the Zim shape extends a CreateJS shape. We override these methods so that we apply them in a certain way. We had put a polygon into this shape at some point because CreateJS didn't have a polygon, it had a polystar. And then um, when we got control of CreateJS, so now we have update control of CreateJS, we said, okay, the polygon should be in CreateJS. So we added this to CreateJS. We no longer need it here in the Zim. We could probably delete that now because it's part of CreateJS. So really the polygon is a basic shape thing. It belongs in the base of CreateJS. It doesn't really belong in Zim. So that's, uh, that was remedied. Okay, uh, in each case too, there's information, video information about the stuff. Oh, that's that's a tour, sorry. This is view of the code. This is a tour uh, uh, that 
takes you through the docs about that. There's the Zim bits and vids are videos that have used this uh, component or whatever this is, the shape. Uh, bits, if you click on bits, here are the Zim bits that use shapes. This one, that's just because it's got a, a shape bound things on there, but this one's definitely using a shape. So that's us custom drawing a shape right there. As we drag it, we're changing the shape. And that little eye is following us. Um, so Zim bits is a whole bunch, uh, that's dynamic drawing. So Oh, wait, that was that one. This is dynamic drawing. We click that and that allows us to, to make shapes as we draw. We now have Zim Pen, so this is kind of older, but that would be the raw drawing of shapes. Now we use Zim Pen. So Zim Bits here is a great place to go for, uh, for seeing small bits of code. And this thing is, is, is a bits filter right there. It's not usually open. And here are all of the Zim bits, like how to, what is this one doing? It's animating and positioning. So that was early stuff on animating and positioning. But now you can view the code there. And you've got the code on how we do that. Um, you can open up the bits filter and see the ones that use these different things in here. Or you just scroll down, take a take a look visually of that. Go back to the text, take a look visually, go back to the text. Okay, that's quite common for people who are just starting. They they might find they they'll search in Google and Google will bring you into one of these bits. They've been around for a while and there's 64 of them. They're a mix of complex and easy. The colors, by the way, are color coordinated towards the different modules, but you probably won't notice. I don't, I don't know if you care per particularly, but remember back on the docs here. Uh, these are the, the colors of the modules right here. So they match the Zimbit bits colors. All right, I think that's a good enough overview of the docs. We were wanting to continue to look at containers, so let's reduce this down and take a look at the code that we were working on the last time. So if we refresh here, what did we do? We animated in a container, we made some stuff disappear, we made some stuff come back, and we were dragging this stuff around. All of that is now in a container. Great. Uh, when we started making the container, right down here, this is the last one, we added in the stage width and stage height and forgot to tell you about what happens with the container when we don't do that. So if you recall, let's take off the animation perhaps. So I'm taking off the animation there. We're locating the holder at 100, 100, and we will dot outline it. So there's the, the holder container right there. It's at position 100, 100, and then inside that we have our objects. So you can see that the container is the size of uh, whatever those dimensions are that we put in there. Stage width and stage height. We didn't have to put those in there. We could have said 500, 500. And then the container would have uh, been 500 by 500 going down. So we've given it 500 by 500 dimensions. Note these things changed up a little bit, probably because of what? When we added the circle, we positioned the circle from the top left. Okay, so that probably stayed roughly the same. But this rectangle, we've center regged on the holder. So now the rectangle it used to be, when the container was bigger, it used to be down here, the rectangle, but now the rectangle is sitting on top of the circle because it's center regged inside of the container. Okay, that's why it's in the center of the container there. And it's registration points in the middle. Remember how you see that? Dot outline, if you want to see that, outline. Oops. And we refresh this here. And there's the registration point centered on this. 
The registration point of our container here is at the top left hand corner. Anything that's rectangular including a container by default gets its registration point at the top left. Also its origin 00, zero is at the top left there. I can't remember if we put a grid in here to see the grid inside of this container. We can if we want. Uh, that would look like, where's the container? Here's the holder or the container. And if I say grid, uh, squiggly brackets, the object I want to put the grid in is the holder. And we'll make it mm, percent colon false. Okay. Oopsies, new grid, new grid, there we go. So now we have a grid that is showing the zero, zero within the container is at the top left. Okay, so each container gets its own coordinate system, as you can see here, with zero, zero at the X there, at the top left in this case. Circles, the, the zero, zero is right in the middle of the circle. But almost everything else, the zero zero is at the top left, including the stage. Stage, the zero zero is at the top left there. So even if the registration point is here, the zero zero within this rectangle is at the top left hand corner. But my uh, what I forgot to show you though is what happens if we don't give a dimension. Comment that grid out for now. Oh, could have used it right here. <laughs> I guess I did show you. Up here, up here we've got um, the container with dimensions. Let's see what happens if we don't put in dimensions. We refresh. Hmm. Uh, did I outline? Yeah, but I guess the outline is a snapshot in time. So what happens is this. There's no dimensions on the container. Outline says, oh, there's, not, there's nothing there. I, I don't know how big this is. I can't outline it. It might be sitting underneath the circle. We're currently not dragging the circle because we added the drag of the circle in the animation. But I suppose we could put a quick drag on there. Dot top, dot drag. Like that, let's just see if indeed, no, oh, nope, so nothing at all. So that's one thing that happens, but did these things get added to the container? We, you know, uh, it's sort of hard to tell. They both seem to be working still, and they both showed up uh, at this location, which is a bit odd. Oh, that makes sense, I guess. So let's outline the the container after we add the circle. So I take that dot outline. Here's the circle. And we can say holder oh, dot outline. Um, and let's pause the rectangle for now, just for a sec. So I commented out the rectangle. Here's what it looks like. There's 100, 100 where the container gets positioned. Here is the circle that got added. And how did we add that circle? We positioned it 100 from the left of the container and 50 pixels down. So here is this circle positioned 150 down. But take a look at the bounds of the container. When we outline the container, this is the bounds of it. And basically what happens is the bounds of a container, if you don't give it dimensions to start, the bounds just take on the bounds of whatever's inside it. So we put a circle in there and it took, took, uh, took up the bounds. Let's bring the rectangle back. Now bringing the rectangle back is a little bit awkward here because we're center regging it on the holder. Well, what that's going to do is this is the holder. That's what it's going to center on. It's going to center on these bounds right here. You just put the rectangle right on top of the circle. Let's adjust that a little bit by center edging it and dot move. Um, something like 200 comma 200. And refresh. Um, well, it wasn't what I expected, but I understand it now. 
we took a snapshot in time of the holder after the circle was made, but before the, <laughs> the rectangle was made. So I was expecting to see the bounds of the container grow to include the rectangle. And that's indeed what happens, but we just put the outline in the wrong place. So we had the outline after the circle was made, but before the rectangle was made. So now we've added the rectangle to the holder and moved it over, yes. And let's, down here, outline the holder, what it looks like now. And we refresh. That's, that's what I was expecting to see. So we've added the circle to the container and its bounds look like that. As if we then center reg the rectangle, it would be here, and then we move the rectangle over and down to here. Now the rectangle is here. And what that does is it opens up the bounds of the container. Bounds, by the way, are always square, or rectangular, I guess. Okay, so if we move that over, um, that's the circle. Here's a rectangle. If we moved it over 400, and refresh. Oh, that's down 400. <laughs> Sorry about that. 200. If we moved it over 400, then we we get that. Okay. So anytime you make a container that doesn't have dimensions, its bounds will take on whatever is put into it. That can be handy sometimes, and sometimes it gets confusing. Okay. So it's up to you. Often, if you're wanting to just take a bunch of things and put it into a container, it might be easiest to just set the bounds of the container to the stage width and the stage height, at which point uh, things will remain the same, in a sense. When wouldn't you want to uh, do that? And by the way, if I move this, indeed, if we check back again, now the bounds would be smaller. Since, since the outline is a snapshot in time, if I move this, then the outline isn't, isn't changing. It was a snapshot at that time. The only time that the bounds move along with an object are, I think, if, we, if we're dragging it. I know if we're dragging it. I think if we animate it, too. So if we animate an object, I can't remember. It might animate the bounds along, or might out, animate the outline along with it. But otherwise, the outline is a snapshot in time. All right. So, uh, uh, one thing to watch out for is hit tests make use of the bounds. There is a, a certain type of hit test, which is called hit test bounds. It's the most basic type of hit test to find out if the bounds of two objects are hitting. Well, obviously, if you have make the bounds as big as the stage, that's going to be oopsie daisy. You know, <laughs> that's not really the bounds. You know, you made it as big as the stage, but it's not really the bounds. So if you did a hit test on that, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't trigger properly. It wouldn't be true uh, all the time. So just watch out for that with hit tests. Otherwise, it doesn't matter too much. Bounds bounds matter when positioning something. So uh, if you pos it, it positions based on the bounds. So if you had the wrong bounds for this, this circle, uh, say they were too big, and you tried to position them zero and zero from the top left, well, then it would position the big bounds that way, which would be wrong. Um, so those are some cases where you might want the bounds to be exactly the same size as the object. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't matter in terms of... Uh, processing speed or file size or anything like that. So, you know, you don't worry about those types of things. Okay, that was probably a rather confusing introduction to container bounds because we already had some stuff made and, it, you know, it kind of went backwards with it. Hopefully it wasn't that bad. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing, even for me. I built for a long time. If I try and start building, say, a person, and I, I start with a container that doesn't have bounds set, and I start adding shapes to it, um, that is dynamically create, changing the bounds, and sometimes it's tricky to work with that. So often I'll say, oh, you know what? This person's going to be 200 wide and uh, 400 high. Let's set a container with the bounds first, and then you can start 
positioning things in there a little bit easier. Uh, things aren't changing on you. You can position the feet zero from the bottom and, and you know that it's going to be in the right place. Um, so my recommendation is as you're starting, you might want to consider creating your, your container with dimensions to start. Just makes it a little bit easier. All right. Let's leave it at that and move to something terribly exciting called tiling. So for that, we are going to comment out all this stuff. I don't know if you if you guys want this file. Uh, I suppose we could post it, but at the moment it's quite the mess <laughs> as we go through this. So the idea wasn't uh, to have a file in the end that you guys could have. <laughs> it's just, let's explore stuff. Alrighty, so I'll leave that down below there and we'll come up to the top and we will say, make a new tile. So this is a special container that takes whatever object we pass in here and tiles it. So let's start uh, simple with a new rectangle. In there, and if even if we leave it default, with uh, it'll be something like 100 by 100 in black. Uh, although we can change some colors to it in just a sec. And let's try tiling five of them by four of them, and we'll give a spacing of 10 and 10. So this is how many in the columns. This is how many in the rows. This is the spacing between the columns, the X spacing, and this is the Y spacing. Great, we made a new tile, but and this is another thing that happens as we're beginning here. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like anything <laughs> because we didn't add it to the stage. Okay, so dot center, we'll add it to the stage. We refresh here and there is our tile. So there's five things across, four things down and a spacing of 10 by 10 or a spacing of 30 by 30. Okay, or um, a different size. Well, well, keep it 100 by 100, but we'll put in red. There we go. Okay, so this is a container that holds all of these rectangles. So that's what it does. It just goes through and makes um, a bunch of rectangles and moves them depending on what we place here. There's other parameters too, like you can specify instead a specific column width um, and column height. Uh, you can mirror images. The, uh, the, the, the tile was made initially for more of an artistic reason. Um, tiles are often quite beautiful. And we can change the colors quite easily with this thing called the ZimV value um, to, to make art. We can animate these things, and as we animate them, they're exciting. Uh, watch this, let's animate it, dot animate. And we'll drop this down and say the props that we want to animate is say the scale, colon to two. Uh, here's what would happen if we just did that. We refresh. Okay, uh, that's not exactly what I was hoping for. What I was hoping for is perhaps each one of these things. So in animation, we've got this thing called a sequence, colon point two. And here's what that will look like. It will instead of doing, well, that's, <laughs> okay, that's not the most impressive thing I've ever seen, <laughs> but it's coming along. Uh, we could try putting a border on this um, of dark and maybe three, something like that. All right, that's still not terribly impressive, but I, I get I get what it's trying to do there. Uh, so you see what it's doing? It's animating each one in the tile in sequence, in a sequence. Uh, it's also animating these from the top left corner. It's like, nah, I don't really want to animate from the top left corner. If we put an alpha on this, dot alpha 0.5, we could see a little bit more about what's going on. Each one of those is opening up. But like I said, they're, they're animating from the top left corner. If we center reg, dot center reg, these rectangles, then 
we get something a little bit nicer. Now they're animating from the center of it, and you get this sort of effect. Okay, well, what about, mm, let's see, making them go a little bit faster, time colon 0.5, and how about a rewind colon true, and a loop colon true. Okay, <laughs> that's sort of neat. We're getting kind of this undulating effect. Uh, I don't know if that looks better with um, with the alpha up or not. So we'll comment that out. Uh, here's where you start playing around. Maybe it would be uh, better uh, with a bunch of circles. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that's the idea. So you can start to make some art and, and patterns with a tile, and certainly we do. So let's not animate it though. And instead, let's talk about how we can click on things. Uh, well, okay, fine. But you happy? Do you like you like the tile? Isn't that? Oh, what I was going to do is maybe get some different colors in there. That, that might look better. I'm not sure. I guess, I guess we can do that before we click on something. So there they all are at the moment, red. If we pass in an array of colors, red, green, blue, well, not blue, uh, purple, pink. That look good. And we refresh here. Now it randomizes those. Those colors. That's called a Zim V value for dynamic parameters. If you pass in an array of something, it will pick from those. So each time it run, makes a tile, each time it makes a rectangle, it will pick a random color from that. If we wanted a series, then we say series, red, green, purple, pink, and round bracket. So this is a Zim series, which will pick the, the Zim V value, the, the dynamic parameters will pick from the series. So first time it'll pick red, then green, then purple, then pink. Red, green, purple, pink. Red, green, purple, pink. Red, green, purple, pink, etc. If we added one more, I think it would uh, work out what color might be nice in there. Uh, we can't use blue. Uh, we got red, green, purple, pink. We could use brown or gray, I guess, maybe. Red, green, purple, pink, gray, red, green. Okay, so there's a, um, that's how you use a series. I sort of like the random bit there and they're going. So it's, and this is a very powerful part of Zim that allows you to do this in a variety of different ways. Say we have an emitter that's going. Well, we don't always want to emit the same particle. We can emit and change that particle uh, as a matter of fact, you can change things here as well. The tile itself, this is the rectangle accepting the Zim V values, but the tile itself could accept different shapes. So if we put an array here and say new circle, like that, comma, new rectangle. It is center ridged. Uh, oh, an array, square brackets there. So what we've done is we're saying, okay, the objects that we would like to tile are in this array. Right there. So we're going to tile a new circle and this rectangle, and that's the object that we're tiling is going to be picked from here. And then we get this. <laughs> it doesn't look all that great. <laughs> Uh, what happened with this rectangle? Oh, there's one thing that's center wedged in there. Okay, so the center wedged one, we have to add colon false. I don't even know if we noticed it before. But what's happening is when we center wedged it here, um, it actually is adding it to the stage, and then the tile is cloning these things. So we want the add colon false. There we go. It's gone. All right. So there's that would center regging would automatically get added to the stage there in the center. 
we recognize that that was annoying with the tile. So when we tile just a rectangle, when we tile just an object, a single object that's center regged, we sort of take care of it. But if it's in a list that we're picking from, I guess we didn't, we, we, we can't take care of it. So we didn't take care of it. And uh, we have to manually take care of that by saying add colon false. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. But anyway, there you can see that the, the pick value is picking between these two um, things randomly. If we did a series of this, then we would get a rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle. And in here, we could put something as well. How about a 50 radius? And then our colors, again, we could pick randomly from the same colors if we wanted to. And we would get uh, get that situation. Let's take off the edges of that. Here you go. Nice, huh? All right, so once we have these things, how could we say click on one and make it disappear? Click, disappear, click, disappear. How do we apply events? If you've done JavaScript or any other coding, probably you've come across events. Uh, the add event listener is usually used as, as a method that will add what's called a listener, like a click listener. To find out if we're clicking, do this function. A rollover, a mouse over. Uh, when we mouse over, do this function. Um, there's a whole bunch of different events. We've seen an event already right here. This is the ready event. And uh, we've applied that event with the on. So in create.js, they gave us on rather than add event listener, which I think would still work here. It's just that's really long. <laughs> so when we're making a framework, uh, and we can decide on you know our own. And uh, no, thank you. I'd rather not say add event listener. Like for years we had this in Flash. Same deal. It's like oh god, it's so long, and we do it all the time. It's like a three-word method. Come on, who who put that there? So we use on. It reads nicely. Frame dot on ready. Okay, reads nicely and it's shorter. Uh, also, CreateJS added another feature to, to that, which is handy. We can um, make this run only once, for instance, with the one, two, three. The fourth parameter is if we set that to true, this event will only run once, and, and that's handy. Anyway, um, this is the on ready. So here we have a tile. What we can do is we can say tile. Did we put a reference to it? No, we didn't. Um, const tile is equal to. Note that this tile is lowercase and the tile class is uppercase. All right, so of course never do that. What that would do is it would hide this. It wouldn't know what that is or give an error maybe, I don't know. Um, so there's the tile. The one thing about the on method, tile.on, is it is not supposed to be chained because the on method does not return the tile, the object that it's on. The on method returns an ID so that we can turn it off. All right, so we're not supposed to chain it because if we chained it on the end of this, uh, well, watch just what happens. There we have const tile is equal to this new tile with center chained. I'm going to zog tile uh, tile. Okay, and let's see what that looks like. And we refresh here, and I have a look, and there's what it is. A tile has all this stuff. So that's actually a tile object. We can tell that it's a tile if we go tile.type. So what is the type of tile? And if I refresh here and take a look, tile, capital T-I-L-E. Sorry, I can't make that bigger as far as I know. Oh, I can make it bigger with a control plus plus. Okay, so um, there's tile uh, with a capital T. This is Zim saying, hey, I know what type it is. It's tile. Oh dear, didn't mean to do that. Desktop reveal. Uh, it's a pain in the neck, this, this console right here. If I Put it if I close it in behind, it won't show up again. So I have I always have to remember to just close it, and then when I click that thing, it opens. Um, all right, so there's 
there's what type it is and what it is. Now watch what happens if I zog tile, but I've chained an on method here, dot on. So I'm chaining an on. I'll have to say something like click, and we'll call this arrow function right here, which really does nothing. But we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. So now I refresh, and let's see what it thinks tile is. It thinks it's this function right here. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> All right, I think I clicked on it and got the sources. It's like, wow, look at that. I, I made it bigger, so we'll, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Normally, it wouldn't look this complicated if it were smaller, but it's still, yeah, there it is. It's still pretty ridiculous. Uh, I want the console here console. So that's that's something else completely and it won't even have a type. So tile.type will be undefined or something like that. Oh darn. See what I did? I closed it. Let's refresh this. See what happens if I... Yeah, see? Right like that. Oh, there. It came up in the second time. Undefined. Alright, so we cannot chain on an on method. Which means we need to separate this out into two parts. The tile and we store that in a variable. And then down here, we can say tile.onClick. All right, let's have a look at this, uh, this event. So tile.on, the first parameter is what event do we want to capture? And the next parameter is a function to call. Then there's do we want it bubbling, which you can probably just leave off. And then there's um, do you want to do this only once? Okay, true would mean this click event would, this function would only run once. Next time we clicked it, it wouldn't do anything. Uh, here's how we usually do the event, just like this. And tile.onClick, let us, what do we want to do? How about we say tile.remove from? Oops. And stage.update. We found that out last time we need to update. So when we click on the tile, we're going to remove the whole tile. We refresh here, click. Um, unfortunately, we can't. It doesn't have an, a finger, so we can't tell that we can even click it. But there it is. There's the click, and it removes. So that's the basic way that an event works. If we want to see a finger, we can go dot cur. That's a short chainable, uh, short chainable method. We'd probably stick it up on here. That. Um, shows a cursor on it. So if we refresh now, now we have a finger. Okay, click, gone. Um, when we drag something, it automatically gets a cursor. But if we put a click method, uh, it doesn't automatically get a cursor. There's another way to do this with a chainable tap. It's called dot tap. So this is a Zim version that is chainable. And we call this arrow function. AF. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. AF. All right, so we got tired of splitting this up into two parts and said, well, you know what? And, and also, a click is a little bit unusual. So let me show you some things about a click. We'll comment out the tap for now. We've still got that click on there. A click. If I press down and I move this off and I let go, it, it's not a click. But if I press down and move it over to here, oh, it's still not a click. Why isn't that a click? I thought that was a click. <laughs> let me show you what happens. Um, something, let's see, I hold down. I'm here, I'm holding down, holding down, holding down, holding down. Click. That's a click. Okay. So, uh, a click can be held down for a long time. Also, I thought, oh, I know what it is. Yeah, maybe that makes sense. Um, I'm actually clicking down on this rectangle, and when I click up here, it's on this circle. So maybe that's the difference. Uh, let's try. I'm holding down on the rectangle and moving my cursor over here on the rectangle. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so a click sometimes is if the object were big then you could click here or press down there and go way over here and press up. 
Sometimes you don't want that to happen. For instance, imagine that you were dragging, uh, dragging a, a list or something like that. And if you press here, click down and then move, you're, you're dragging the list, dragging the list and you press up and all of a sudden it clicks the list. I was, no, no, I was just dragging the list. I didn't want that to be a click. So we introduced this thing called tap. And what a tap is, is it has to be, uh, well, you can set it in various ways. The tap, first of all, needs to go down and up quickly. So you can't just hold on to it and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and then let go like you can a click. Uh, because it's a tap. <laughs> a tap isn't uh, click down and hold, 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 and click up. That's not really a tap. Um, so we introduced tap to be able to handle that. And I, I think that one we default to, you know, tap for quite a long time, like maybe even 10 seconds. So really we, we decided, okay, maybe we'll leave that. The other part to a tap though is it can't move. It can't change the um, position of it more than five pixels by default. So uh, you can change that in the tap. And the other thing about a tap is it's chainable right there. So dot tap. And that's a tap. And if we want, we could do the same thing here. We could say tile.remove from stage.update. A couple other things about tap. If we comment that out, the click out or the on event, uh, the tap doesn't need a cursor. So tap comes with a cursor already and it's chainable. So that we don't even need to specify a tile anymore. We could just, uh, all that works without having to separate it into two different parts. So that's a zim tap. And now when we tap, <laughs> it didn't work. When we tap, it should go away. Oh, what happened? Uh, I'm tapping, interesting, F12. Let's, oh, I can't F12. Tile is, oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, we're, we've now got an effort, uh, an error, tile is not defined. So if something doesn't happen, make sure you've got an update stage. That might've been one reason why it didn't happen or there's an error. So we check the console and saw a red error. We're trying to access tile.remove from, and we no longer have a tile specified. So that's when we introduce the concept of the event object, which will be put into here. We usually collect it as E, and we can collect it here. Uh, let's comment out the tab, sorry. <laughs> Go back to the, the classic uh, on while I talk about the event object. We'll come back to the tab in just a sec. So the event object gets collected here as usually we use E. Some people use EVT or event object out in full. Uh, I don't know anybody who does that. But all of our Zim examples, the letter E. Uh, also, you might be saying, oh, but, 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 if it's in an arrow function and you've only got one parameter, you don't actually need the brackets. <laughs> I could just hear you guys saying that. Yeah. So that is true. If we have an arrow function and we collect only one parameter, we can avoid using the brackets like that. So it simplifies it a little bit, doesn't it? For now, just in case you're too worried about that, we'll leave the brackets in there. So here we are collecting the event object. What the event object does is it tells us more information about the event. And we're nearly done here. I know this has been a long one. Huh. It's been a long one for me anyway. <laughs> has it for you? Some, some laughter is always good though. Oh, yeah, just you guys sit back and laugh for a bit. Oh, the event object. Oh, there, that's so easy. Yeah, the event object can be a little bit uh, confusing in your minds, although for the most part, this Zim Basics is already assuming that you know JavaScript Basics. And this is all part of JavaScript Basics. If you had add event listener here, or, or ask event listener, add event listener. Uh, did I spell that right? Yeah, if you have add event listener after years of spelling it, I think I, I didn't even pay attention to what I was doing. My fingers just went and they happened to spell add event listener. Uh, I spell add event listener in my dreams, in my nightmares actually. Um, but anyway, tile.add event listener, you would have an event object. And we have one with on as well. And we have one with tap as well. So what does the event object give us? It gives us what object was clicked on. So, oh yeah, we need the tile back again, don't we? Uh, const tile is equal to 
Um, so coming on down here, we could say tile remove, but also um, we can say e.target. So e.target, e.target is what was specifically clicked on. Now, this is going to be a little different than what we had before, and that's a good thing. Um, that's why we're we're using it. E.target is what object was clicked on. You ready? Check this out. Ooh, oh, darn, we forgot the uh, cursor. Bring that back. So what object was clicked on? Neat, and that's what we really wanted to get at, and it is that allows us to click on specific objects. If we want to go back to what we did before, that is e.current, uh, oops, the other way around, e.current target, and that's sort of like, uh, that's some name, isn't it? E.current target. I would never have guessed that. So E.current target is what the event was put on. So this this click event is placed on the tile. E.current target is the tile. So now the whole tile will disappear again. Click, gone. Okay, so that's quite common. You'll see these things. E.current target is what the event was put on. E.target is what was actually the object that was actually caused the event, uh, which is something inside the tile caused the event. The circle captured the event and um, therefore it gets removed. Okay, we can do the same thing up here. So, you know, we didn't have to do that here. We could have just said tile, but if we wanted the specific thing, we would have had to gone to eat our target. Yes. Uh, up here, we're getting rid of the const tile. We're getting rid of the current. So we're going back to our, our tap again. Oops. And we can't say tile.remove from, but now we know that we can say e.current target.remove from. So we still don't need to specify a, a variable for the tile because we can just use e.current target if we want to remove the whole thing. And here we go, pop. Or if we want to remove only the specific ones in there, when we tap on the tile, when we tap on the tile, I want you to remove the target that we hit. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> if we can hit the target. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that cool? So there you go. That's how events work. And we're going to take a look at components in the next uh, Zim Basics. We'll look at components and we will see, finally, <laughs> and we will see how we can activate those with a tap, uh, like a button tap or a, an on. It doesn't matter. Uh, we could use on as well on, on these components. We can find out how sliders change their values with a change event or indeed a short chainable change. Just like we have a short chainable tap, we've got a short chainable change. And we'll take a look at that in the next Zim Basics. I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully that wasn't too twisty for you. We saw today, we saw containers uh, without dimensions. So if you, if you hadn't seen containers before and missed the earlier uh, Zim Basics, you should have got back one basic where we looked at containers and talked all about them. Uh, but we forgot to talk about containers that did not have dimensions. And as you can see, that's a little tricky. We would recommend as you start, usually put dimensions on containers. But one day, uh, there may be a time when you don't have to do that or a reason why you would not want to do put dimensions on a container. All right. And then we talked about um, a tile, which is a special type of container that has a bunch of things in it. And we also saw how to interact with those individual things using the e.target or the whole thing using the e.current target. Woohoo! Oh, and as a bonus, we also saw the ZimV values to, to allow us to pick various things like that. Okay, so uh, there you are. Come on in to zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord where you can ask any questions and hang out with us. Yeah, we'd love to see you there. Have a great day or night. Ciao.